a little bit tradition, not three years in a row. I mean, it's like two juggernauts of football coming together. These are the nights that you play football for, you know. These are the nights that you dream of playing. Kevin De Bruyne! That is vicious from Vinicius! We are strong. We feel that we are strong. This is not a match of the Real Madrid lights. For Real Madrid, this is also a nightmare. Torres on the move. Probably for the fans watching it, it's obviously a great game of football. They have a lot of quality, they, they put a lot of pressure, and so nothing new, nothing new. It's a good team. That's the Champions League we play against one of the best teams in the world. Still a good score for us, 4-3, one goal uh, more than them, and now uh, on to the next one. Reduce the deficit. Oh, what about that? He's Penenkele. And he goes to Foden. On towards Alvarez! And welcome to Madrid, welcome to the Santiago Bernabeu. My name's FG and I'm with Manchester City legend Sean Wright Phillips for a massive game here in the UEFA Champions League. The atmosphere in this stadium is quite something, isn't it, Sean? Um, yeah, you've been, we've been sitting down, obviously preparing for the game, the build-up, and you can hear the fans from outside now. As you can see now, that's just starting to filter in. We've got the whites, and then you've got the little sky blues up there somewhere, but we know that it's going to be noisy, and the City away fans are going to be incredible, as always, when the game kicks off. Yeah, there is a small pocket of blues on our top left side, and they've been having a great time in the square, as we have as well. We've had a good time in Madrid, haven't we? Um, yeah, we, we definitely have. We've put our dancing shoes on, had a little bit of paella, and all the rest of it. <laughs> that is all to come in today's Match Day Live, which you guys will be seeing. But let's reveal the Manchester City starting lineup, shall we? And then we'll have the Real Madrid one after. In goal for Manchester City is Stefan Ortega, and then it is Akanji, John Stones, Ruben Diaz, and Josko Vardiol. Mateo Kovacic plays, as does Bernardo, Phil Foden, Jack Grealish, and Erling Haaland. The substitutes for Manchester City are Edison, Carson, Doku, Alvarez, Gomez, Nunes, Bob Sosoho, and Lewis. And the Real Madrid team is Lunin, Carvajal, Rudiger, Chuameni, Mendy, Valverde, Camavinga, Crows, Vinicius, Bellingham, and Rog Rigo. Now then, let's focus on the champions of the world, shall we? Um, an interesting team. Most importantly to start with, Josko Vardiol is fit. He travelled, he didn't train, which was everything we were, we were sort of worried about. But it's good to see him starting the game, isn't it? Um, definitely. Um, we, we've obviously got uh, situations in them areas already. Obviously, with Walker injured, we've got a few other injuries around the team, like Edison. So when you're hearing that... Josh Gale's going to maybe have that same problem. You're thinking, oh, we're coming into a big game. We're shorthanded against a fabulous Real Madrid team. So to have that solid back four back in there, it obviously makes you feel that much more comfortable. Now, the roof here is going to be shut. So I guess you need players who are very, very good on the ball to keep possession. And who better than Jack Grealish, a man who we've actually really, really missed because he's been injured. I think City fans and people watching Match Day Live have probably realised how important he is. But what's so good about his strengths of his game? Um, everything. I think if people had watched the last two games that he played in, coming back from injury, the way he played, how confident he looked, and he actually looked like he was enjoying his football again. Reminded me of the Jack from last season, the way he finished the season so strong, and he seems to be planning on doing the same thing. And if we need him to be like that, we need him to do it now, and that's what he's come on and started to do already. We saw him in the game just on the weekend, just gone. I thought he was incredible, and I hope he brings that into this game as well. How much was a milestone, was it, last year? Obviously, being now the holders of the competition, this City side will have probably the best belief they've ever had coming to the stadium, although the record here is quite good anyway. Well, for me, that's why they shut the roof. They want to make it as noisy as possible and try and put Man City players off. But I think this team has been through everything. Anything you throw at them, I feel like they can handle now with that the way they play, the maturity. They know how to win ugly. They know how to win nice. They know how to see games out now. And that was, I would say, that years and years ago, which things were worried, people were worried about. When we get the lead, we don't seem to be able to close. We do that now. We close out, and that won us the treble last year. So I think we're in a better place mentally than I would say we've ever been because of all the experiences we've been through. We absolutely are. And Rodri as well knows this league or knows playing against Real Madrid very, very well because he came from Atletico, who are their bitter rivals. Um, he'll have, obviously, he, we see how good he is in a city shirt but this fixture mean a little bit extra to him um i don't know the way the way i think he plays i think all he, all he cares about is winning the game and putting on a performance that for him himself that individually helps the team and that's what what he's done for a year hence the reason why 
Jinx Tushwood, see ain't lost with him in the team for a calendar year. He makes sure he does the most he can do, and I think he's an incredible asset to Man City. Let's hope that Jinx Touchwood works, because I wasn't going to mention it, yeah, so no, I'm no. glad. So, if we don't mention it, somebody else is going to. Absolutely. And then, <laughs> obviously, Bernardo Silva as well, the importance of Bernardo in this team. Um, do we think he's going to play out wide on the right-hand side like he did last year in Phil Foden, perhaps, in the middle? Um, yeah, because you know how hard he works for me. I think Phil Foden works out hard as well, but, I mean, to have Bernardo, well, you know they're going to rotate anyway, those two. Sometimes Phil will be out there, sometimes Bernardo will be inside, but the way them two both play and the way Bernardo He's a little jinky runs. He, it's gonna, he's going to be a handful for them because it's, when you're at a place like here, you have to re retain possession of the ball. And I think Jack and Bernardo do that very, very well. They they keep good control of the game, and that helps Man City in that movement and our position rotations. And a massive confidence boost for our own Phil Foden as well. He got a nice, well-deserved rest um, at the weekend after scoring a hat-trick, and now he's straight in. But he'll, he'll really, really start to feel like the main man in this team now, won't he? Um, well, he deserves it. I think um, he's had to fill some big shoes this season. We've obviously unlucky that Kevin, Kevin's been injured and it's not a hard man. That's a hard person to step in and try and replace. And I think in his own way and his own playing style, Phil Foden's managed to do that and play a massive role in this team for the season for where they are right now. Like this far in the Champions League where they are in the Premier League. That, a lot of that comes down to the way Phil's played as well. You've seen his goals and his assist ratio for the season, and that, that doesn't come from nothing but hard work and the attitude to want to be the best and to want to be in this starting lineup all the time. We absolutely love him, a goal-scoring midfielder. Right, let's head to the Matchday Live studio in Manchester from here, so we'll be back shortly. Thank you so much to FG and to Sean Wright Phillips, who are pitch side at the Bernabeu. Welcome to Match Day Live. It is exactly 328 days since we humbled Real Madrid at the Etihad Stadium. And I'm very, very much looking forward to tonight's game and to tonight's show. We'll be going back and forward to the Bernabeu to see FG and Sean Wright Phillips and find out what they've been up to in the last few days in Madrid. But there is Manchester City royalty all over the show this evening. I'm so excited to be sat next to Izzy Christiansen, who's back. Thank hey, you. Izzy. Thanks for having me. To the goat, the goat, <laughs> Sean Goater is with us again. Hey, Sean. Hey. And then we're very, very excited. We have current Manchester City player Jill Rod for your first time. Hey. Yes, hi. Thank you for being here. Are you excited? Are you looking forward to the show? I am, and I'm looking forward to the game. I think it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a good game. It's going to be a good night. We have the team news. We know the starting 11. Sean, what's your instant reaction? Well, my instant reaction is I'm really pleased to see the squad that we got out. I was intrigued because I was wondering about the Addison, uh, because Addison's potential to, to put balls over the top if they go aggressive. But Ortega is such a quality goalkeeper. He has real calmness. It's almost like both keepers are at the same level. Um, I think it's going to it's going to come down to how we how we deal with finishes and you know how we deal with finishes because he is a quality player, one v ones and whether um, we anticipate or I anticipate him playing in a wide position. I think it'd be a real trick up the sleeve if they were to move him almost centrally behind uh, Jude Bellingham. But he's he's definitely one to watch and, and keep quiet. Um, from City's point of view, our players are really in form. Um, I think of Kevin De Bruyne, Foden, as you know, as the boys were saying. These guys are really in good form. So uh, we, we, go, we come there or we go there uh, with so much confidence as opposed to previous years. Um, and I think there's a real calmness about the team when I see the boys walk off and walk into the dressing rooms, a real calmness. They look damn cool as well, don't they, by the way? <laughs> Just seeing them walk in the stadium there. They look cool. Uh, the Vinicius conversation, I think, has been the key one that everyone's been been speaking about in the run-up to the game because, Izzy, obviously, we know that Kyle Walker is, is injured for mm -hmm. this game. We know that... I think it's fair to say Kyle Walker had him in his pocket at last, <laughs> last did. season. So, without Kyle Walker, how do you think... So, if you're looking at, looking at our back four this evening, mm -hmm. how are they going to deal with him? Good question. I think it's probably as, as strong as City can go, bar Cal Walker. And obviously, it would have been, you know, fantastic to have him available, but he isn't. So you've got to adapt. And I think, um, you know, like Sean said, they'll be looking at, you know, Vinicius Jr. is a, is a threat. But if you mark him, who are, they've got other players that can come to life. So I think it's going to be more of a, it's a back four thing with Rodri in front, of course, um, marshalling the spaces that they want to they want to play in. Um, and I think. 
the key tonight is the transitions of the game. Like both teams are so capable of hurting each other with a click of a finger, with the ball forward, you know, the combinations. And I think it's just going to be a case of staying alert all over the pitch um, and knowing that the intensity of the match tonight is, uh, is going to be special. It definitely feels like that. The Palace game on Saturday with their first goal, although I was, was worried about the Palace game, Jill, I've got to admit, I was already thinking about the Real Madrid game and I was thinking if we give them space like that, Pep would hate that, wouldn't he? would hate that. If we give them space like that tonight, they on the break, on the transition, they'll they'll go, they'll, they'll be able to break us down. So um, in terms of the importance of, of Rodri, of, of Kovacic, of, of the back four, how do we stop that happening? I mean, I think... Real is comfortable with City having the ball and obviously I think that's going to happen in the game. City is going to be having the ball and the most important thing is that like, we take care of their transition so we have to stand right the back four and uh, Rodri in front and mark the players and not give the ball away. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the goal that Palace scored to go 1-0 up at the weekend was exactly how Real Madrid will be looking to hurt City and like you say, they can't hurt them if, you know, if City retain the ball but... Tough at that level, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Is he, sorry, is he, sorry, I said it. Said it. Oh, hey, by the way, not a bad debut for Jill, by the way, Real Madrid. Real Madrid. I'm, like, oh, no. like, I'm, I'm, I'm not big complaining. Time. I'm not complaining. <laughs> We're pulling the big guns out. Big guns out for the That's big it. show, for sure. Um, and we've got big guns in the studio, but we've got big guns on the pitch as well. Because if you're looking, you know, if, if we stop worrying about how they're going to score against us and start thinking about how we're going to score against them, um, when you look at that sort of front front line there for City tonight, the Haaland, Grealish, Foden, Bernardo, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, in recent games, all of them have shone. Yes, and what's really intriguing tonight is Erling Haaland, he's an absolute beast, so if someone wants to be physical against him, he can hold people off, he can run down his sides, and we know what it's like as a finisher. And then we've got the, the guile and trickery in the wide areas, Foden, his ability to interchange with Bernardo, coming inside, being in a 10 position, or if he's out wide. And Grealish, I've been, I, I really got to speak about Grealish, because I think he's, he's coming with real quality. And I think he'd, he'd obviously love to score more goals, but what he does see is he has a calmness when he receives the ball and he actually attracts extra two and three defenders. And what that means is the space on the other side, if not directly on the other side, on the, on the edge of the box because they're overcompensating with Grealish. Uh, and, and he has a real calmness of, of taking the ball, going at defenders. And even if it's just a 10-yard uh, ball diagonally back, it, and then it goes square, all of a sudden we've got an advantage. So his calmness and being able to go at defenders, go to the byline or drive inside and link up, he's shown real, real compersion quality in his last few games. So I've really been, been impressed with him. I'm a real, real Jack Grealish fan. I really feel like we've missed him, Jill, in some of these games because like, it's that kind of calmness that, that's going to mm. be so important tonight. I love Jack Grealish. I love the way he plays and he's so creative. But at the same time, he always keeps the ball and... You see sometimes with wingers, they, they do their thing, but they l lose track of what's happening around them. But he's really good at that. I, and, and I think given the sort of difficult start to the season that he had by his standards, mm. I mean, he's, he's come out in this last week talking about how he's found it difficult and how mm -hmm. Pep has been behind him. To be pulling out the performance that he did at the weekend in the game before at this point in the season, is he all? I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, I'm also joined the Jack Grealish uh, fan club in, in, in here tonight because I absolutely love him as well. Um, you know, he, he doesn't... To go from all the highs he had last season, as a, you know, as a player, come to City to win trophies, that's exactly what they did. Um, you know, the iconic picture of him on the bus in Manchester. Like, he was loving life, wasn't he? But then with football, we all know, you know, you're, you're up here and then you come down here quite quickly. But for him to start getting back up to those levels, um, you know, it's great to see. And he's a guy that really plays with his heart and his sleeve. He's got so much personality and you just want him to do well. Um, and he'll be key tonight. Like Jill said, like he's got such good like ball retention skills that he draws the fouls, he gets you up the pitch, he keeps the width, like mm -hmm. you say, um, which will be, you know, it will be the out ball. And when you've got the likes of De Bruyne and Rodri that can slip the passes through, um, he'll be uh, he'll be loving it tonight. He really does draw the fouls, doesn't he? He does. Like, is that like a special <laughs> talent, do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Do you, do you draw fouls? Too? Oh, I'm <laughs> terrible at that. I should, I should, because I'm big and they, but they pull me, but I, I never do that. No, but it's like, it's helpful. Like, I wish I could. 
<laughs> and, again, and a game like this evening, it's going to be huge because it, you can imagine if there's transition, Pap will not want that, and Chalati will not want that. But if City's got the ball and Jack's got it, the fact that he can draw fouls, um, and, and again, it, that he's drawn fouls, it gives it chance, a chance for the team to have a breather and to, to have like this. 20 second conversations. I need you to come closer to me. I need you to push out wider. And you're resolving issues because he's able to, you know, get up the field. As Izzy says, he could take the team, drive them up the field, draw fouls, uh, which, which will be absolutely key. Absolutely key. Yeah. Really looking forward to seeing his performance tonight. I'm so happy that he's back in the starting 11. In terms of those other kind of forwards up there, for, uh, Foden and Bernardo, where do you prefer? This is like the age old question now, isn't it? Like, how many times are we asking this? Where do you, prefer where do you want them? Yeah. Anywhere they're effective. And yes, we all yeah. know they're effective, you know, in and around those corners of the 18 yard box. They come to life. Um, Foden is just an absolute dream to watch. And whichever side he operates on, I, I actually don't know which side he, I don't know what you think, but. It depends on how they see the game, and I think we'll probably see them switching. We've seen it with Foden before. He has changed sides during a game, especially towards the second half. But I think with the way that they play, there's so much flow. And, you know, Guardiola will, will be looking, you know, for, for them to dominate possession. Um, and if they do that, they'll be in full control. In addition to that, the key thing is Bernardo is a player that keeps the ball. And when you look at City's team, they're players that can keep the ball. So whether Ferdinand's out wide, his ability to keep the ball, his ability to work hard when, if the ball's lost, he works back, he wins the ball back. Uh, and, and Bernardo, <laughs> I would not like to be on a pitch trying to get the ball from him because <laughs> his ability to go down in a cul-de-sac and then still come out with the ball and you think, well, there's three <laughs> players around him. How does he come out? that technical ability, that intelligence and knowing where the space is, how to exploit it and, you know, keep the ball. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. So I think, as Izzy said, you'll find that those two sometimes will, will, will swap. One will be on the outside and the inside. I prefer Foden as a 10 because I think, you know, when he gets the ball and he's the best at receiving the ball, turning and driving, and then he's able to drive a team, slide passes, and he has a good shot outside the box as well. And, you know, not to diverse, but... I think you got three tens on his sofa here, you know. Hey? He's a number ten, they're a ten. I was a nine, but I'm a ten tonight. Paul's a nine. <laughs> you always a ten to me, Sean. Always a ten. <laughs> um, in terms of Phil Foden, he was described at the weekend on this show by Joe Cole as Iniesta. I mean, that's that's one heck of a, a comparison, isn't it, Jill? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's extremely talented, very good. I don't like comparing players. Iniesta was amazing, and I think he's amazing, and he, like, I think he can get even so much better. So I'm very excited to see him tonight in such a big game and see what he can do. I'm hoping we get a celebration tonight. Um, now, I read a stat today about Haaland, and it's a trick question, really, but I wonder if any of you know it. Um, there's only two sides that Erling Haaland has played against more than once where he hasn't scored. Uh, one of them is Real Madrid. The other, any ideas? It's a trick question, uh, by the way. Yeah. That might be a clue uh, for you. I'm not sure. English team? Yes. I feel like I know it, but I can't remember it. It's such what a trick question, Arsenal? you're going to hate me. It's Manchester City. Ah, OK. Manchester okay. City and okay. Madrid. Yeah. <laughs> OK, the only, nice, yeah. The only yeah. two teams yeah. that he's played against more than once where he hasn't scored. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> no, no, we want, we, we want him scoring tonight. We want him scoring against Madrid, but yes, never yeah. against us, Sean. Never against us. Never I mean, against yes, us. Yes. Um, will it, he'll, do you think he'll know that? I mean, given that he scores against everybody that he plays against, do you think he'll know he's not scored against Madrid? I, th I think he'll know. And today, I think... It's hard for a player to go without knowing these sort of information. I think there's, mm -hmm. there's fans that will be dripping it to him, whether, mm -hmm. whether it's on social media or whether it's in passing. I think he'll be aware of this. And, and as a goal scorer, I think he'll be aware and know this, that when he's played against you know, them, he hasn't scored, and he'll be, he'll be looking to end that. Because he had, a, I mean, in terms of last year's leg at the burn about him and Rudiger had a right battle. I mean, and I think Rudiger probably feels like he won that battle because obviously Haaland didn't mm. score. Mm. Do you think that's going to be another like key battle on the pitch tonight? Definitely, Rudiger. You know, you know the way that he plays. He's so physical. I mean, you want your centre backs to be physical, but Rudiger's on another level for me. And I don't know, like I don't know whether you can judge your success as a defender on whether you're opposing player doesn't score or not because I, I, I feel so. like do you think you if, can if I'm a defender and I'm marking <laughs> you as, and you, as a forward and you haven't scored I think I've done my job but, okay so you still lose the game you're still feeling good about yourself no no <laughs> no, <exactly. laughs> no, no 
<laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Um, but an interesting thing with that, that battle there, I think that if, if Haaland can be side on and can be getting balls down his side, I think he's a whole different animal. But if he's receiving balls with his back, yeah. holding it up, and Rudiger's putting, applying that physical pressure, which makes it more difficult to hold the ball and set it back, he'll, he'll have a more challenging game. So I think it's particularly interesting to see how he has his body shape to be able to receive balls, whether it's to feet or just on his side, because I think when he opens his legs, that's when you'll start to see the best of him. And, and well, we're seeing what type of passes De Bruyne can give mm -hmm. um, just to put him in, into his stride. So, of course, Kevin De Bruyne is on the bench this evening. And, and, well, I don't know. It feels like if Kevin De Bruyne is 100% fit, Kevin De Bruyne plays. Do you think it's because he played only a few days ago? Are we managing the minutes? Are we more interested in him coming off his yeah. sword, keeping him fresh for next week? Oh, gosh. I, d I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if... You know, the way that De Bruyne plays, I don't think he's got it in him to take his foot off the gas. He plays at 100% all the time mm. and he's coming back, you know, he's coming back from injury, hamstring injury, and you have to be careful. But, I mean, he ain't out on the pitch unless he's ready and he's ready. And we saw his performance at the weekend and I think he knows his role in the team now. I mean, he's proven he's gold dust. You know, he's, <laughs> yeah. it's that one. But then the other one doesn't get spoken about. I'd love to get Sean's take on his second goal against Palace at the weekend, his technique. Oh, the left, oh, the left like, foot. Like, this is not normal yeah. technique. No, it's not. In like, fact, yeah, it's not normal. But, in fact, I remember having a conversation with him and I said, I think you're left-footed. And he laughed at me and said, no, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's got such ability. Um, but... Kovacic is a player that, that comes in and can play the role in terms of, I think possession is so key. And when you think of Kovacic, or when I think of him, it's somebody that, another player that can keep the ball, um, whether he can come deeper and play, play alongside Rodri or whether he stays higher and has to be in the pocket and just maintain possession. So I think that, that'll be a key thing. And we're sitting there talking about keeping possession. Now, Kevin De Bruyne keeps possession, but he also hurts teams. Yeah. I just think City wants to come away with this game, having won it 1-0 or will mm -hmm. take a draw. Mm -hmm. I think Real Madrid have to come away winning this game mm -hmm. because they know what we're capable of doing from the last time we was at the Etihad. So we're told that Kevin De Bruyne is feeling ill. So Kevin De Bruyne okay. is feeling poorly this evening. So that is the reason why he is on the bench. But again, we've just saw his two goals from the weekend. And just want to take another opportunity to say, obviously, a huge congratulations to Kevin De Bruyne. 100 goals now for Manchester City. I adore that graphic as well, like Kevin, Kevin through the years. I mean, Jill, in terms of one of the greats, he's, he's easily up there now, isn't he? Definitely, yeah. Uh, he's so such a special player and such special qualities and he scores goals and scoring goals for a midfielder like it's like that's that's a gift so yeah i love watching him play you know all about that jill all about i that. mean <laughs> I'm not even close to that but no like you don't like comparing players you just compared you to de bruyne come on take it <laughs> midfielders who score midfielders who yes. score yeah heck yes jill take it we like to big our people up on this show <laughs> um, so we're currently running a poll on social media for kevin de bruyne's best ever goal we've given you four options to pick from you can choose your favorite have a vote now on twitter and here we go um here's a couple of the examples for you. That was all right, wasn't it, against Swansea? That was pretty decent, John. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, it's such a clean strike. Yeah. The goalkeeper goes for it, but he, he, he probably knows he can't get near it. <laughs> Keeper looks like he's in a decent position. It's, I mean, who's <laughs> stop, who, who is stopping that? I mean, this is, he's, he's oh. as, as a player, a, t a tan, you know, he strikes the ball so well with his left and right foot. And it, it's unbelievable. And I don't, does he get tappings? <laughs> He doesn't want it, does he? He's no, but you score like this. I mean, <laughs> so this oh, I, can't, I can't believe that, I that just... may get voted the best because when it hits yeah. the bar, it, it feels like it seems like it's a better goal. You know, a strong Ooh. keeper goes for can't get near it. That looks sensational. It's this one for me, is he? This one. Let me see this. Real Madrid last year. Oh yeah, of course. Little driver. And we needed him at that point. Oh, we were he's... one nil down, so it was like the 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 importance of it. Yes, um, we may need him to do a, a program on striking a clean ball because <laughs> yeah. um, all these strikes, they're all clean. They're, they're all clean. And have you ever hit one like that, Jill? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have. Sorry. 
<laughs> the technique on that, though, to keep it down as well, like the way the ball, it's like a... Yeah. Like a, I don't even know what to describe it as, but this one here at the weekend. And then this is one of our options. This was his 99th goal as well. So the poll is open on Twitter and it's open on Instagram. What would you be going for of those four? Um, the f probably well, I, I know the what I'd go the, for. either the one against Real Madrid because of the context as well and the technique on it is a joke. And also the first one, like to hit the ball like that from that far out into the top bin. Oh. Not you just took my answer. I'd be voting several times. The first one, <laughs> the second one, the third one, fourth one. Get voted. Can you, can you pick one for us, Jill? I mean, I think the third one is very difficult, the way it comes back, and then to hit it like that. So I would go for that. Me too. I'm going with Jill. We've yeah, got it. Go We've got it. You can have a vote now on, on Twitter and on Instagram. So we're going to head back over now to FG and to the wonderful Sean Wright Phillips, who are pitch side at the Bernabeu. Yes, thank you. Welcome back to the Bernabeu. Well, let's talk about Kevin De Bruyne and his goals. Um, we've seen the X-Pole, um, but Shawnee Wright has a bit of a, a, another one that's his favourite. And I, I like the thinking behind it. Well, the one against Bo Bournemouth, we I think we won it 4-0 if I'm correct, but the way we were struggling to break them down for whatever reason, Bournemouth were playing really, really well. And just the way Kevin put this ball in the back of the net from the outside, with the outside of his boot, he just whipped it around two players for me. That goal for me was probably one of my favourite. Just the time that he did it and when it was needed, like it was just fantastic. And what was it that you said he did before the goal? You did he gave me a he little. He gave like a little jink, and he had like his proper dancing shoes on that day, so <laughs> it, it worked out perfectly. It did. Also, a special mention to the PSG at home, which is probably my favourite, or the Cardiff one, which made people lie down on the floor yes. because he got it under. So shout out to everyone who goes in a wall. If you were in a wall, would you be the one lying, lying down on the floor? So I don't think I'm tall enough to cover the whole wall, so I don't think I'll put the, be put there. Let's take a look at the Real Madrid team then, shall we? We've, we've seen it, we announced it before. We'll start with the defenders, we'll start with Carvajal. An interesting thing he said on social media was that he wanted everybody to turn up to the Bernabeu in white, he wanted the support to be loud. Have these players taken last year and used, are they going to use that as sort of a revenge tactic tonight, do you think? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say a revenge tactic. I think they're just trying to find any plus to help them win this game. They know how good City have been against them over the years that they've played them, and they've seen how tough they found it because, like I said to many people before, I've never seen a team wipe the floor with Real Madrid the way City has done over the years, whether it be one leg or not. They've completely dominated the games that time and made Real Madrid not look like the Galacticos. So right now they're in their home turf and they want as much help as well as the way they're going to play to help them come through this time. And of course things have changed this year because they've got a much stronger midfield than they did last year and where better to start than the number five the man who's taken Zidane's shirt Jude Bellingham. He's come to the club of this size when people have struggled yeah. and he has become the main man. I, I think he's done fantastically, but do you think this midfield's better than last year's? I personally don't. But I personally think there's more on the buzzer players in that team of last year and the year before than I would say in this team now. I still think they're quite youthful. They're still learning that trade and learning how to take these big moments. I think Drew Billingham has been fantastic since he's come there, especially from an English player's point of view. I think he's been phenomenal. He's walked through the door as a big man and carried the team as the main man alongside Vinicius Junior. So for me, I think he's done fantastic. But I still don't think this Real Madrid team's better than the one that's won the, the Champions League time and time again. There is a few players in this Real Madrid side who are booking away from missing that second leg as well. In a fiery atmosphere in a game of this magnitude in front of your home fans if there's moments in the game where it's not quite going your way you're not having much of the ball which is very possible when you're playing against the champions of the world how do you keep you calm in an atmosphere like this because there is some fiery characters that are on buckets well let's we we've got to be happy about that to be honest with you i'll just keep giving the ball to jack and Bernardo because we know they like to, to draw those tackles in but as soon as you think you got the ball their feet are quick enough just to move it or just tow it away to make that tackle be late and then you put yourself in trouble but they're going to have to be careful and that might impact their game as well and the way they want to play maybe they can't be as aggressive they want to be they can't be that much on the front foot because like you said that one card away from missing 
the, the next round, which could be crucial for them going through if, if, it, if it, that ever happens. Now, let's talk about um, Vinicius Jr. There's been a lot of talk about him already in the press everywhere this week, in particular the fact that Kyle Walker isn't able to play. But, I mean, he offers so, so much. He's quick, but he's, he's also got a bit of strength about him as well, hasn't he? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think people are just... It's, it's easy to point out the fact that, oh, he's he's really, really quick player. I think people don't understand dribbling with the ball at that speed is not just about being quick it's it's, it's it's a talent in itself the way he manipulates the ball the way harry he moves players around he doesn't just kick the ball and run he actually like moves his body to wrong foot the defender to get that half a yard and as we can hear the the city boys are on the way out now that's what all the booing and all the noise is about which is fantastic atmosphere i'd be excited if i was going to play in this They'll be absolutely relishing it, our goalkeepers, as you see them walking out. Edison is on the bench, Scott Carson as well, and Stefan Ortega um, behind us as well. But the atmosphere in this stadium is a massive up. And, of course, the roof is closed. At least it's not freezing cold, eh, Sean? Well, it's a tactical ploy from them again, isn't it? They want to quiet and the City fans down and make it a very, very hard place for City to come and be relaxed and play the football they love to play. It's going to be a very, very interesting game. That's our reaction to the Real Madrid team news. First things first, there was somebody in the Match Day Live studio today. There was there someone you want to call out in the studio? Well, I think Izzy should get a fine. You're putting it out there. I think we'll go back to Natalie in the studio and she can explain to everyone watching why Izzy is getting a fine. <laughs> Have you not been feeding Sean Wright Phillips in Madrid, by the way? Man, is uh, snappy tonight. Uh, I like it. Um, Have we got a response? I don't know what was in his paella. <laughs> He definitely. Because yeah. I was late. I was late. And I, he's got a point, to be fair to him. But you made it for the time we went on air. Yes, I did. So I'm here. I would have let that slide, but he's called you out on it, so... No, it's fair. I, honestly, I pride myself on being on time, so he's, he's got a point. Fair play, Sean. 1-0. <laughs> All right, Shawnee. All right, we'll, th we'll, th we'll, think, we'll think of a studio to pitch side comeback for you. So, um, Sean Wright Phillips and FG are pitch side at the Bernabeu. Um, of course, a place where City came last year with that one all draw. Real Madrid are unbeaten at home this season, much like we are unbeaten here at the Etihad Stadium as well. First thing I want to touch on before we go into the individual team is the fact that Real Madrid have had nine days off. So the last weekend was the uh, Copa del Rey final. It was um, uh, blocked off for them. So they've had nine days off. On top of that, Vinicius was banned for that game, suspended for that game. And so he's had even more time off. So I want to ask the three players in the room, if you're coming into a game of the size of this, Jill, do you want nine days off or more, or would you rather be going off the back of a win a few days or the back, back to back wins that we've had? I don't think it matters that much, but I would get bored if I would have nine days off and I would be thinking about the game too much. I think I would prefer playing like a few days before. Yes. Sean? Yeah, I think momentum's key in terms of these situations. If you've got momentum, it's nothing like having played a game, won a game, and then you're looking three days, five days later, a week later, you've, you've got your game. But when you, you get into nine days, even, even from a, a coaching perspective, you're, you're keeping players active and ticking over and, and you're gearing up. You're gearing up and you, you're like, we don't want players to get injured, but you're just gearing up and, and it's nothing like you play a game, four days later, you've got another game. Let's get into it. Yes. Good answers all round, Izzy. Same. Brilliant. Absolutely the same. Good. Momentum is everything. Because I was worried, but now I'm not. <laughs> now I, don't, I would never worry you again. It's all about momentum. <laughs> I love that. Uh, the other thing we've been hearing a lot about uh, outside of the team is the fact that they, this roof closure, roof closure. So they've played a lot of La Liga games with the roof closed this year, but they've specifically requested it for this game tonight, Jill. How have you ever played in a stadium with the roof shut? Yeah. Well, how did it impact the atmosphere? <sighs> not. I mean, not that much. I mean, maybe it's different there, but. I, when I when I played, I didn't think about it. I didn't feel like, oh, this is different or anything. Do you think that that? Do you think it is a game plan for them in terms of to try if they think it affects the atmosphere to try and is is, is it, are they trying to psych us? Maybe. I don't. I, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't blame. Like I understand if they think it helps, but I, I don't know. Okay. For them, I, it's a, it's a good call. The reason being. Madrid fans will be whistling, they'll be booing, they'll be making all sorts of noise. And as close as we are right here, this, I can be shouting at my loudest, you all can be shouting at your loudest, you will not hear each mm. other. So this is where you have to have a total awareness in the game. And at that moment of time, when you're receiving the ball, 
to be known you could turn or that you can turn. Um, so you, I can't set a ball or, or play a ball and say, turn Jill, like Jill's not going to know. Oh. She has to be aware of that. So I think it's an advantage from their point um, to make that noise. But City, we play in a way that players understand the world. So, you know, City play in a way that they, even though we communicate and it's great to communicate, City players don't have to communicate because they all know the rules. Mm. Who is that doing the side splits there, by the way? Wow! Crikey! <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I was, I was in here not that long ago, uh, well, for the group stages of the Champions League this year, uh, Real Madrid's game against Union Berlin, and sat on tier four out of five, and it's scary. It's like vertigo. Like, there's metal bars at the seats at the top just to stop you from falling, and like you guys say, like, the atmosphere... The atmosphere was incredible. The game was pretty flat. I think it ended up being 1-0 final minute Jude Bellingham, but... The game was flat, but the fans were unbelievable. So that is a real factor tonight. But City fans travel really well, don't they? They have such yeah. good away support. So I, I don't think it'll be a hindrance to, to the players at all. I think they'll be fine in that environment. Um, I've been to the uh, stadium three times, twice as a fan, and sat on the fifth tier. And scary, isn't it? I mean, you can barely see. I mean, if, if, if I forgot my glasses, I would be able to see who's who in the <laughs> right far away. Where's but, the ball? Yeah, exactly. Um, but, I mean, when we brought them back here to the Etihad Stadium, for me, it was one of the best atmospheres I've ever felt in my whole life. So we don't need a roof closed to build an atmosphere. <laughs> right, on the actual team. So let's have a little talk about the Real Madrid team. Um, a few changes, obviously, from the team that we played last year. The key one there being Jude Bellingham. I mean, a lot's been said about Jude Bellingham this season. At 20 years old, phenomenal. He's had 20 goals this season. 10 assists mm. already. How vital is he to this team, is he? He's an amazing. Like I said, that uh, experience of seeing him play, you know, in the flesh at the Bernabeu was incredible. Like, obviously, being in English, like, you want your English players to be doing well. Probably not tonight so much from a City perspective, but the way the guy plays is just unbelievable. I mean, you're looking at players in that team, Modric, you know, and when you got a player like Modric, whenever he gets on the ball, he's looking for Jude Bellingham. It says a lot about Jude Bellingham, who he is. And Modric, every time he got on the ball, he was like looking over his shoulder, where's Bellingham? Where's Bellingham? I'll find it to him. Even if he was two yards away, he'd play it to him. He'd play it in back. And that's what they've got in there. They've got more midfielders in that team with Jude coming in. Um, so Madrid have a kind of different style now than they have over the last couple of years. So I actually think it'll be a little bit like, I know we speak a lot like from a coach's perspective, it'll be a game of chess between the two managers. With Madrid of recent years, it's more like play on the break, transitional, back to front quickly. But now they, with Bellingham in there, they've got much more of a sort of a possession-based ball dominant style. Jill, he's a, he seems to have adapted phenomenally. Obviously, he, he'd, had the, he'd had the time in Germany, but then to go to, to a club the size of Real Madrid, and he instantly became, I mean, a 20-year-old a, a super, like, super superstar, like, mm. world super... Like, I don't know how you would even... Galacti, Galactico for yeah. them at 20 years old. He seems to have done the transition seamlessly. I mean, how difficult is that to go to another country and, and just immediately fit in? I was actually about to say that. I think going to a new club, being that young to one of the best clubs in the world and like performing direct not even performing being their best player from the start of the season that is that doesn't happen usually so like yeah like I, I'm impressed <laughs> and to have learned the language he's, he's learning the language he's um he's stopping and chatting to the fans you, you, you see him and I think uh, Gareth Bale described it as kind of playing the Real Madrid game he seems to be doing everything off the pitch as well as on the pitch as well yeah I think maybe that's also his age I, I feel like obviously I don't know him at all but he's very down to earth and I think that's what the people love about him as well yeah he seems seems very humble and likes likes the likes the Madrid Life, Sean. Yes, he does. See. I mean, it, that shows you he's got a good team around him because whenever I hear him speak, I think he speaks a lot of sense. He's very humble. Yeah. Uh, uh, and as everyone's saying, you know, him, him actually going there, he's just going to another level. The fact he's wearing number five, <laughs> Zinedine Zidane's yeah. number, like, of all players, this, this is a world-class player. He's taken that and he's showing his personality. He, you, you always see clips of him sort of with his arms out and he's gesturing, he's giving it all this here. And, and I just think, you know, well, well done, but, but just not tonight. I don't want to hear yeah. that tonight, you know. <laughs> but he's going there with a personality. He's going and, and you read little clips and you, you read little bits of saying him being a personality in the dressing room. I think it was Rudiger was saying about he's a personality 
in the dressing room and to be as young as he is and 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 take all that on uh but also in a humble way well done to him yeah, he said, he said to be 20 to go into that dressing room, it's phenomenal. He is one of the players, FG mentioned it before, that he's on a yellow card already this game. Bellingham, Vinicius, Camavinga um, are all on yellow cards and um, Tuchemeni is on a yellow card as well. So if they get booked in this game, they won't play in the second leg at the Etihad. Right, honest answers from, from the former players and the current player. Are you going into them hoping that they're going to come for you and get booked? <laughs> Well, those players, Real Madrid don't want to be losing any of those four players. Are you winding them up? Are you chatting in the rear? Oh, you've got Grealish on the pitch. You've got Foden on the pitch. Bernardo. But ball, you need Paul Dickoff right now, isn't it? <laughs> it? Yeah, of course you are. You've got to. It's part of the game, isn't it? It is. You've got to get in their heads. Are you chatting in the rear? Are you trying to wind I, them up? I'm, I'm chatting in the air. I'm playing my game <laughs> focused, but I'm trying to draw them into fouls. I'm really drawing them into fouls. And I think this is... Because he's also in form, I think, a huge reason why Grealish should be playing. Bernardo Silva, these guys keep the ball, as I said, with numerous players around them, but can draw fouls. And it'll be one of those, if you, you start drawing two and three fouls, all of a sudden you start saying, hey, referee, where's the yellow card? I mean, Vinicius, if he was out in the second leg, I would love that. I'm not here for this, like, let's be the absolute best. No, let's just win. Let's just win. If he was out, I'd be absolutely fine. Because, I mean, he's having an insane season. He's having an insane time in the Champions League in general, Jill. He's been involved in more goals than any other player in the Champions League since the start of the 21-22 season. Um, 14 goals, 13 assists. I mean, he is a world-class talent, isn't he? He is. And, um, yeah, great goal. <laughs> no, he is so dangerous and, uh, yeah, we just have to make sure he doesn't get the ball too much and, and don't give him any space because he's very effective. We just seen that clip there with him being central and if they were to do a move and have him central, I think that would be a really clever move. Yeah. The fact he's out wide, he has to go across a player. Uh, hopefully we could have another player to, to back that player up and cover that player. But being, being central, the fact uh, his pace and his ability to go across players, and if he was to link with, with Jude Bellingham, that could be a real different threat. Um, as great as our defenders are, but I like the idea of him actually being wide. You take one player on, then another will come across. We can get a midfielder, Rodri, to fill in for the centre-back when the other one goes across. It's easier to cope with and deal with, but if he was central and he skips across a player, there's, there's, there's no cover. There's no cover. So, um, it just... I mean, listen, we've got, we've got world-class defenders and he's a world-class player. Uh, as is Real Madrid. Um, but I think a lot of it's going to come down to the energy in midfield, um, the energy that, that they have and that we have, because we, we ran over them at the Etihad because they didn't have the legs. They've got some younger players in there, and that, that's going to help them a little bit. Uh, but from our point of view, I think we go there with confidence, we go there with great tactics, um, and we go there with players in really good form as well. Love that, Sean. And we go there knowing that we absolutely hammered them last season. I mean, to be fair, it's, it's, you would call, you know, if you had to call the Champions League anyone's competition, it's theirs. They've won it the most out of anybody that has. They feel like the Champions League belongs to them, but we have the Champions mm. League. How much do you think that's annoying them? How much like, reven do you think they want revenge on us? A lot. And uh, I heard Rodri say in his um, Match Day Minus One press conference, he said, they're the kings of the Champions League and we've got the crown. And I like that because the Kings want their crown back and City have got it. So I think that this game, you know, on paper, like, could be a final because of the, two, the, the size of both clubs. Um, but of course this will be bugging them and that's why they're going to every single little detail with the roof and, and obviously trying to create that hostility because they know that they don't want to come here because of what happened here. And they know they've got to do some business tonight and Man City will be totally happy with that. But just going back to the defender thing, you've got to expect, Man City have got to expect that all of their Galacticos and all their best players are going to have the game of their lives tonight. And if you're ready for that, you won't be, you know, they'll be all right. <laughs> yes, love it. Thank you. If you'd uh, like to send in a WhatsApp question, as always, you are very, very welcome to do that. Get your questions in for any of our guests and I'll get through as many as I can. And don't forget, you'll get your full match commentary tonight on the Manchester City app with Alistair Mann and with Andy Morrison. The WhatsApp number is on your screen now. Of course, we just saw him there a second ago, Rodri. He knows all about growing up in Madrid. And we wanted to keep FG and Sean Wright-Phillips nice and busy when they were over in Madrid. 
So we sent them to speak to Rodri's, I love this, Rodri's first ever club, Rio Mahada Honda. Bueno, él es un chico extrovertido, pero un jugador que cuando hablabas con él se notaba que tenía un coeficiente intelectual bastante importante y un grado de madurez por encima de la media de, del grupo. Él destaca, eh, como el resto de compañeros que tiene alrededor, pero sí su mentalidad nos hace presagiar que él puede llegar a ser futbolista profesional en ese momento. If you had to describe Rodri in one word, what would it be? Football. El mejor recuerdo era cuando nos pasábamos el balón eh, y ayudábamos al equipo a, a conseguir la victoria. Pues era, era muy fácil porque ese año tuvimos un equipo muy bueno. Eh, en ese equipo jugaba Rodri, Lucas Hernández y, y aparte teníamos otros compañeros magníficos. Do you think Rodri is the best centre midfielder in the world? Sí, por supuesto. It's weird, then. He's in one of those positions that are never is not really glorified. You don't really see too much, but somehow he glorifies that position. The, you look at the important goals he scored, the way City don't play when he's not in the team. Era distinto. Era más más tímido. En, en el campo saca su mejor, su mejor versión de carácter y, y juego. Y, y además es un líder eh, muy importante en, en los equipos y en, y en la selección. Ojalá España sea la campeona del mundo y del europeo. Y él es uno de los líderes, por supuesto, del, del equipo. Más los éxitos que tenga con el Manchester City, pues le harán que pueda ser el, el próximo Balón de Oro. I watch him and I sometimes think to myself, are you ever going to sprint? He's that, he's... IQ is so high for me when I watch him is that he's positioning when he's off the ball. He's always in the right place and he's always in the places where he's meant to be at that specific time. And I think that helps the way City play, especially progressively football and defensively on the transition as well. So for me, he's some talent. I just, uh, I want him to get more and more accolades. Bueno, la verdad que es increíble que la suerte de haber podido entrenarle, conocerle personalmente y, y sobre todo ver la progresión que ha tenido. La verdad que desde que llegó al City de la mano de Guardiola, pues incluso ha mejorado las, las características ofensivas que antes a él le costaban un poquito más. Eh, me alegro mucho de, de haber jugado contigo. Eh, me hubiese gustado jugar mucho más tiempo, eh, pero bueno, disfruto desde la televisión eh, de todo lo que haces, de todo lo que consigues y, y sobre todo el el legado que estás dejando para, para el fútbol español. that absolutely loved that thanks to fg and to sean wright phillips there oh rodri what a man well from rodri to road look at that from one midfielder <laughs> to yeah, another nice. sounds the same smooth smooth <laughs> smooth um, oh, and we want to have a chat about you for a minute please jill oh, go on um first time on the show we do this to everybody find out a little bit more about you but first of all how are you can you give us an update on uh, your injury and how you're recovering I'm good actually. Uh, nine weeks ago, I had my surgery. Um, everything is going really well. In a few weeks, I will be running again, uh, which is exciting. So, like, obviously, it's a long process, but so far, it's going really well. I think there is many, many people watching that will be so happy to hear that just a few weeks away from running. Um, in terms of you coming to Manchester City before the injury, obviously you had a phenomenal start to the season. Eight goals, 16 games. We talk about Bellingham transitioning. You seem to do exactly the same here. You seem to just slot into this team. Did it feel as easy as it looked? Yes, actually. I feel like um, coming in here... Everything went really easy. I think the way City plays and, and how they how they feel about football and, and training wise and games like suits me perfectly. So it was easy for me to to actually start playing here. Um, so yeah, it's it's yeah, I really enjoyed my time so far. 
Have you, were you impressed with how easily Jill slotted in and settled in? Yes, very much so. I mean, after a few training sessions and then into some games, we're having discussions as, as coaches and, and we're all in there talking about certain decisions she's making and we're all coming in and it's just like, oh, what a clever decision. It was absolutely brilliant. Oh, she positions herself to be able to go forward uh, or drop down and then create space. Um, but the fact she's here, the, we wanted her to come and bring goals. She brought goals. Um, and her personality started to shine more and more. And so we were absolutely gutted that she had picked up that injury. Um, but I see every, every I see every day, and I'm, I'm always saying, "How are you doing?" Because we, we want her back because she's she's been an amazing player for us. Hopefully, you'll be back for next season when your team is in the Champions League. Because of course, we already know that we've qualified for the Champions League for next season because the gap is so big, mm. so big now on mm. fourth place. Um, how much are you looking forward to that next year already? Very much. That's the only thing I've missed this year. Um, no, I've played Champions League pretty much every season since I play professional and like especially nowadays with the group stage and everything and 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 like the fans at the games it's so yeah championship is something special so I'm really looking forward to to playing there again so for that we apologize we're there next season for you oh, thank you <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> I mean, it is in, it's being a phenomenal season. Uh, in terms of the last four games of, this, of yeah. the season, I mean, we're currently sitting top. Obviously, Chelsea have got the game in hand on us. Just four games left. How are you, how are you feeling? Are you confident we can do it? I, I mean, I'm confident, it, but it's so different watching from the sidelines. Um, but I feel like... I feel like the team is, is in a very good place and I feel like everybody's confident. And I honestly think it's going to come down to the to the last game, which is very exciting. But also, uh, yeah, like especially for me being on sidelines, like I'll I'll, I'll be nervous. But um, no, we've had such a good season, and I hope we can continue the last four games like that. And you said that going to the last game of the season, Jill, my <laughs> stomach went <laughs> like oh, I, like it's exciting, but the nerves, yeah. like because we've I've seen so many leagues go down to the last day of the season now. How how are you feeling? Yeah, well, the one thing I mean that that'll be how players think, and and there are some staff that will think that way. But the one thing we don't do is go past the initial for next game. Oh, you, yeah. you're in that. Can I, can I just yes. say that yeah. the game, the last game, WSL game against Liverpool away that you won four yeah. one. Yeah. And I'm not just saying this, right? The best football I've ever seen in the WSL. In that game. Gareth, the accepts way... your, your compliment. <laughs> Did he? Did he hear me on commentary? <laughs> I think he was watching tonight. Oh, really so... watching? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's we were, fair. That's... Yeah, we were well, really it... pleased. We were really pleased with how the girls yeah. performed. And it was so many. So when we go in, sometimes when a team, we play really well. Sometimes you want to still pick out things where you can improve. And we were really searching for areas to go, well, where can we get better? And it's, it's just one of them. But you oh. can't just walk in and go, well done. Go, go back out there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was really pleased. We were really pleased with everyone. That's a serious compliment. It, it is. I said I saw Alex Greenwood the other day, and I said the same to her, and she was like, "Really?" And I was like, "Yeah." And she was like, "I could tell she was happy with it, yeah. as in like the performance." Yeah. No, she's very humble, you know. But, yeah. Mm. But and obviously, like Jill said, it's tense. Like four games to go, it's almost neck and neck. But I mean, from my perspective now, looking in, and I'm like, I see a lot of the games. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the football that was played in that Liverpool game was unbelievable. Yeah, just speaking of Alex, I mean, she, she's a winner. Mm. And after the game, she, as a defender as well, she's like disappointed we conceded a goal. Um, and she's just like not happy. And that's, mm. that's typical what you get of a defender. But we played some really good football uh, on that day. And, 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 and we've done a lot of improvement in terms of like set pieces, the team, in terms of the detail that's going into some of our set, set pieces. Um, Chris, two Chris's and Ellen Mann. All the staff, like the detail we're going into, um, is really helping us and, and making a difference as well. Izzy, what do you, what do you think? <laughs> like, obviously we've got <laughs> we're, we're at top. Chelsea Ooh. have got the game in hand, that they, but they need to win. It, then it's goal difference with the level of football we're playing, with the fact they've got their eye on a couple of other things as well. Mm. I mean, it's we, Izzy, we can do it, can't we? The last game of the season. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think they're at Man United away. Yeah. We're at Villa You're away. at Villa away. Villa yeah. Away, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, I think Jill's spot on. I think it's going to go down to the last game. I see both teams, you know, top, top level. But, I mean, the football that you guys are playing 
different level, goal difference could be a factor. Um, but I know where my heart lies, what shade of blue. You. <laughs> <laughs> and that last game of the season is the Saturday for the women, this, and then it's the Sunday, the last day of the season for the men. It could wow. be one of the greatest weekends mm. ever. Oh, oh gosh, wow. I'm already looking for... <gasps> Take a deep breath, OK? I'm also taking a deep, deep breath because I'm so unbelievably excited about what we are about to watch. And no, it is not Real Madrid versus Manchester City that's get me this excited. We sent Sean Wright Phillips and FG to learn to dance because, of course, Sean Wright Phillips was in South Africa recently doing this. I can't with him. Look at the moves. So, we're in Madrid. Obviously, we all know they like a bit of flamenco in Madrid. Sean Wright Phillips can clearly pick up some choreography. Check him here. I mean, he's living his best life. <laughs> I mean, we need to say something back about this, Izzy. We really do, don't we? <laughs> um, this was him in South Africa. So here he is with FG in Madrid, learning to flamenco. <laughs> All right, it's match day minus one here in Madrid, and I have the pleasure of spending some time with Manchester City legend Sean Wright Phillips. Sean, when you think about Spanish culture and life in Madrid, what comes to, to mind? Food, Marbelli, paella. I hope we are getting some of that today, and if we are, I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure there's going to be time for me and you to get some paella, but I've actually arranged something really special for you. I know you like to two-step a little bit, so why not try out some of the Spanish dancing, or should I say flamenco? Well, to be honest, I thought from Cape Town that my dancing shoes were retired, so I don't know about that, but I think I'm going to be watching you do it. I think you're going to dust your dancing shoes off, because we're going to head inside and we're going to see what Sean Wright Phillips has got to offer in terms of flamenco. Hello. Uh, I, am, I am Lorena. I'm a professional dancer. So today I am give you the, the class, flamenco, flamenco class. So I hope that you enjoy. Sure, I'm really looking forward to it. To be Have you done any dancing before in your life? Depends, not properly. I can remember <laughs> a Sean Wright Phillips dance. I have something to show you here. What do you make of Ooh. Sean Wright? What do you make of Sean Wright Phillips' dancing move? <laughs> well, that's a so you got your own moves. Yeah, cool. Yes, a bit of a, I a love bit of a robot, yeah? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that like... wouldn't make it in flamenco, though, right? But we can do that in... <laughs> <laughs> See? Yeah, I told you. <laughs> Maybe we just created a new flamenco move. Should we get started? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's do it. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. One, two. Okay, we're at the halfway stage right now. How do you think we are doing? They are really good. They are really good. Yes, yes, yes. It's so disciplined. Yes, I really like it. Who's better, me or Sean? No, you're good. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you're like a team. You're like a team. You. you look stiff, I look very relaxed. Yeah, no, oh you're God. very relaxed. Yeah. Well, I'm a bit too relaxed, I think. I think, yeah, the hips getting in the way and stuff like I that. I right? agree with that. So who would you say is better than if you had to pick one? No, you're like a team. That's <laughs> <laughs> yes, so well, I will take it. <laughs> well, let's carry on then. <laughs> you love your hips, isn't it? <laughs> one, three, four, five, six. Be careful with them. <laughs> <laughs> Take two to okay. tackle. An example. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. What a lesson. Um, what a lesson. How did you think we did? You were great. Yes, yes, point yes. Of said that. I know that flamenco is really hard. I know. I know. And you're like a great team. So, uh, did you like my hip? Of course, that's natural. He's got <laughs> natural, natural good hip, Sean Wright Phillips. So, we're going to ask you the same question again. Okay. Who was the better dancer, me or Sean? I got the same idea. You're a great teacher. <laughs> she's, she's an unbelievable teacher as well. Thank you yes, so much. Thank you very much. Tonight. Thanks to you. Nice thank, to you. thank you very much. And we will see you later. Bye. <laughs> In that. Um, can we just say the best answer to do flamenco is Sean Gota. You were giving us a few steps there while he was, was. on. Go oh, on. I'm gonna, yes, here he goes. Here he goes. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> hey. 
<laughs> See? There you go. <laughs> Sean Ryan Phillips ain't got nothing on Sean Goat's moves there. Go. there. <laughs> I love that. Love, love, love that. Uh, thank you so much to FG and to Sean Wright Phillips for being such good sports. We are. <laughs> We were very much enjoying that. We were enjoying that, just like we were enjoying when Manchester City played Real Madrid last season. Of course, we met them in the semi-final, a draw at the Bernabeu, and then a 4-0 dominant display back home at the Etihad. We have now played Real Madrid ten times in the Champions League. The first four games, we just couldn't get going. We got beat in the first four games. After that, we've won four out of six. The tide has well and truly turned, and it brought us to... Last season semi-final. And I don't think I'll ever get over that game. I mean, Sean, that game particularly at the Etihad was one of the best performances I've ever seen from Manchester City. Absolutely breathtaking. In ter you know, in possession, absolutely amazing. Playing through the thirds with great tempo, getting the final third, having composure, being able to punish them, but out of possession. It's almost as though it was really a smothering performance. They would have the ball, two, three passes, win the ball immediately. It was just absolutely sublime. It really was. Gives us a reason to look at the goals again, which I would quite happily do a million times over. So, of course, one all, we come back, the atmosphere is sensational, and then in the first half, we just switched it on. In that game, Bernardo Silva is he was phenomenal. I mean, we're seeing his, his first goal of the night there, but oh, Bernardo was special in this game. He, if I remember rightly, he ran so much, and we've seen a few of those performances, haven't we, from yeah. Bernardo Silva, where he's just been everywhere. And then for this little finish here, the one where he gives him the eyes, the keeper goes the wrong yeah. way. <laughs> that's, that's nice. That is a nice little finish. And that just got City up and running, didn't it? Look what it meant to him there. I love that celebration. So that went 1-0. <laughs> um, so 2-1 on aggregate there. And then he did it again to give us a bit more breathing space. Uh, Bernardo Silva, his second goal at home. And a header, Sean. A header, he'll take that. But that's because... Because of how City play, we've got numbers in the box. So that's like, Aaron, look at there, you've got five players. We've got five players in the box. You can't, you can't stop that because the way in how we play and we build up, the momentum, the pressure that we had on them. Um, Bernardo, he, he, he scores a couple of big goals. Those were a huge goal. And talk about atmosphere. That night was absolutely electric. It really was. It really was. I hope we see a Bernardo like that tonight again. <laughs> um, that night continued to be absolutely magic. Of course, Manuel Akanji with a goal as well for the third. So uh, I'm giving it to Manuel Akanji. I'm not saying it's a deflection. These special nights, let's give the big moments to, the, to our players. Uh, so that made it 3 nil on the night, 4-1 on aggregate. Let's have another look again. Is that a deflection, Sean, or are you giving that to Akanji? Oh, Akanji, all day. The defender's not meaning for it to go in the goal. Um, and, listen, throughout, throughout City, throughout City period, the, you know, the set-piece coaches will love that, because they, they would have looked at Real Madrid and how they could have been exploited on set-pieces. It looks something very simple. Um, goes in, we get the first touch, they, they can't do nothing. It, it, it comes off the defender and it goes in. It's cities are under luck, but that also be looking at them and how to exploit them when it came to set pieces. So set piece coach would have been very pleased with that. Oh, I love that. I hadn't thought of that. I love that. OK, <laughs> fourth goal of the night, fifth over the two legs for Julian Alvarez. I mean, he that look, Jill, they make that look so simple, but I imagine it really isn't. Yeah, no, like, I think they, they make it look so easy that you underestimate how difficult it is. The timing is perfect. That's a no-look pass. That's one of your passes in a duel. Yeah, you say yeah. I do that, huh? You I do, don't do you it on purpose. You, you don't even realise she does it. <laughs> no, I don't do it on purpose. <laughs> you told me from the beginning. Yeah, no-look passes. But Phil Foden there is looking one way, he reverses it back in, into Alvarez's um, stride and he, he finishes. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So that was 4-0 at home. That was 5-1 on aggregate over the two legs. And it was a really, really magical evening. So let's hope for another performance like that over these two legs. We are 
15 minutes now away from tonight's kickoff, 8 p.m. in the Champions League against Real Madrid. Don't forget your full match commentary with Alistair Mann and with Andy Morrison. So uh, we're going to get everybody's final thoughts now. Hopefully we might get back to go over to the Bernabeu again with FG. We can! Amazing. FG and Sean Wright Phillips are still pitch side at the Bernabeu. Yes, thank you very much. Welcome back to the Santiago Bernabeu as our Manchester City players are warming up. It's time to go back on a trip to memory lane, down memory lane, shall I say. Real Madrid at home at the Etihad last year, Sean. What are your memories of that game? The domination. To be honest with you, the way we totally dominated the game, and I think I mentioned it somewhat before, the, the fact that it's not many teams have made Real Madrid in some ways look very average. And I think a few times that City played them, especially last year, they, they've actually done that. And it didn't matter who was playing, that City team, I just felt like there was no stopping them. The atmosphere at the Etihad that day, from a fan's perspective, is one of the best I've seen, maybe going back to a famous game at the Etihad, which was Hamburg, which I'm sure Natalie and everyone in the studio will, will remember. But the atmosphere, the Real Madrid fans, the Real Madrid players came away from that fixture, talking about the Etihad atmosphere, 12th man. Exactly what they're trying to emulate here again, to put the Frighteners into City. I think it will make it difficult, but like I said, I think the boys are used to it. But I should imagine the atmosphere is going to be quite noisy here. We heard a bit, a little bit of it when that when that players just run out now, just the lower tier, and I'm looking forward to hearing it once it's all fooled out and the game's about to kick off. As a player, when you do face atmospheres like that, talk us through what it's like. Every time you get the, the ball, you're getting, you know, booze, you're getting loads of noise around it. Does it put you off your game? Well, some teams it may do, but I think City have gone through that all before. They, they know what to do. They're very calm team they're good at keeping possession so hopefully that possession helps them quieten that crowd down a little bit especially if they get a chance and they might nick that first goal then it should quieten the crowd down just a little bit and they can carry on doing what they're doing now going into tonight's game let's talk about the final thoughts as we can see our players warming up they seem really relaxed like they always do um, we saw Bernardo come in and take a ridiculous first touch. Um, how do you think they, they're going to they're gonna do tonight? I think they're just going to be fine. Of course, it's going to be difficult without, say, Carl Walker or with Kev, without Kevin. Like, there's a few big players missing, but there's also some massive players that have taken those places and will, for me, will do just as good a job, but in a, in a completely different way. So I think they'll take it all in their stride. And I think the game's going to be a very difficult one for Real Madrid. It is a game, of course, of two legs. How do you think we're going to approach it here? Do you think we're going to be... I mean, we're obviously, with Kovacic coming in for Kevin, we've got that defensive-mindedness now in midfield to maybe, you know, sit back if we need to, etc. Do you expect us to manage the game completely here? Well, I think we've seen City through the Champions League over the last year and a half, two years, the way they manage games, especially away from home. For whatever reason, it doesn't seem to matter who they come up against. I can't remember the last time they've actually lost in the Champions League. Now that just shows you that mindset. So they're, they're going to come here and play that game and play the way we always know them to play, but they still know how to play it just that little bit different where that their, their, their mindset is right. We're away from home. Don't take too much advantages. Don't get too relaxed. And don't come too complacent in, com in good possession of the ball because that's what Real Madrid will wait for to, to hit you on that transition. And there we go. The fans are starting, aren't they? You can definitely hear the atmosphere here at the Bernabeu. Um, for Real Madrid's perspective, what do they want to take? Is it just a win they want to take back to the Etihad? Because last year it was domination, but it was one all last year. Of course they're going to want to win because going to another somebody else's home, especially now champions and Man City, who are effectively the best team in the world, is a difficult place to go. So it's a safer way to go there is they win the free get win the game here, which isn't going to be no pushover, but they know that anyway. Well, we've got the atmosphere is absolutely incredible here. I feel like the roof's making a huge difference as well, which we spoke about. Um, that's it from us before the uh, game. We will head back to the studio and see you at full time. Thank you very much to FG and to Sean Wright Phillips. So, 10 minutes until tonight's 8 pm kickoff in the Champions League. City taking on Real Madrid. Full match commentary available on the City app from Alistair Mann and from Andy Morrison. So. As the game gets closer, Sean, how are you feeling? What sort of game are you expecting this evening? Well, I feel calm. I feel that um, I think it's important. I think Sean was alluding to that. I think from Madrid's 
point of view, they need to go to the ATA with a win. So I think they will need to be aggressive. Whether they start aggressive, at some point they need to be aggressive. And I think this is why City's going with the lineup, I think, is so that we can keep the ball. Uh, the crowd will whistle and all that, but I think keeping the ball is going to be key to draw, so draw them on. And then I think we'll be able to find those spaces for Erling Haaland to get down his side, uh, to get down his side and do, and do what he does. So I think this, this will be the game plan, I think, and how they will play and how we'll counter it. If you're just joining us, the starting 11 is on your screen. Kevin De Bruyne is on the bench, but he um, we have been told that he is feeling ill this evening. So Kevin De Bruyne is ill. Kovacic is in the starting 11 there. Uh, Jill, do you think that Real Madrid are going to come out very aggressive looking for a, a big home win this evening? I think they definitely won the win. Uh, I don't think they're going to start being aggressive. Um, but I think at some point, depends on how the game goes as well, they will come more and more. Um, in terms of a good result for us tonight, Izzy, what do you think the game plan is, given it's the first of the two legs? Well, as obvious as it sounds, it's 180 minutes. And I think what City need to do tonight is tap into the sort of emotional intelligence of Real Madrid and say, how much do you want this? Because we're confident in us. How much do you want to win at home? How much do you, how much do you fear coming to the Etihad? without anything and they've got to sort of ask the question but with City I think that there's an element of we're safe we know who we are we know what we can do but if the moment's there to go and score take it but naturally the way that City play they do create chances but they've got to be really careful about when they do push forward because of Real Madrid's ability on the counter-attack and the transition so I can't, I can't wait for this it's going to be brilliant so given it is that sort of 180 minutes like you say what would 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 a draw be a good result for us? I mean, obviously it was a draw last season. I think a draw is a good result for both teams. I think Madrid, their objective tonight is don't lose, do not lose. I think if City can come back here to Manchester with with a draw or a win, they're completely they'll be completely fine in the second leg. Um, but I just think for City, it's do not let Real Madrid come back here with anything. Um, in terms of key battles tonight, Jill, who are you most looking forward to seeing on the pitch? I think Haaland and Rudiger. It's going to be very interesting. Is that going to be um, one of the sort of key how Rudiger handles him or how Haaland can, can get the better of Rudiger? Yeah, I mean, it happens so much before they even get the ball, obviously. But I think, uh, yeah, just they don't want to let him score. So I think that's going to be key for Madrid. The exciting thing about that, that battle there is the space, the space in behind. And if it was a foot race, I think Erling Haaland would just edge him. So if he gets a little too tight or too aggressive mm -hmm. and Erling Haaland's in the right position, uh, position-wise, to be able to run forward and that quality of ball was in his stride, I think we could find him being a benefit, that benefit City. So I think it's important how he plays tonight and not back to go, but more side on to be able to set balls or even to turn and drive forward. I think that's going to be a key part. But Cruz is one that sort of... Rodri for us, but Cruz for them is important because they dictate the pace of the game. Madrid want to want to keep the ball, but I think our press and our, our ability to get amongst them is going to be key, so that they don't really get much of a rhythm, and then we could control the tempo. And I think this is where Rodri will be very well. He'll be key because he does that in, in pretty much most games. Okay, I'm going to ask you all for a score prediction just for tonight's game, Izzy. Glad you came to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say the same. Obviously. You can say the same, that's you OK. Can go, you can go. You're allowed to say um, the same. 2-1 City. Yeah. <gasps> Were you going to say yeah, the same? Yeah, I was going to say really? that. Yeah. Were you? Yes. Oh, my god! I feel like everybody always says 2-1. <laughs> It's the easy answer. I was yeah, going to say... I was going to go 2-1 no, well. no, as well. No, you weren't. You weren't. No, I, I think 3-2 three, three, to City. Oh! I think 3-2. I think they've got to come out, and the more they come out, whether it's a late in terms of second half, I think City would then go, no, we want to go and push on. So I think 3-2 City. I was not expecting any of you to say a win. I just thought everyone was going to say draw, 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 draw. Oh, City are going to no. get a draw, City are going to come away with a draw. I was Ooh. thinking that. I have to say, I was thinking that. But I think this game will play out in a way that City will go, no, if it's there to go take those chances and shots, I think City will take it. This is what makes me feel that 3-2. 
oh my gosh, okay, right, the teens are in the tunnel. Um, my head is about to explode with excitement. Izzy Christiansen, thank you so much. Sean Gota, thank you. And Jill Rod, thank you so much for being here. We'll all be back at half time and we'll be back at full time as well, as will FG and Sean Wright Phillips. Full match commentary on the City app now with Alistair Mann and with Andy Morrison. There we go. The teams are in the tunnel being led out by Ruben Diaz. Right, Blues, it's the big one. Can we do it again? Come on, enjoy the game. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Natalie. Welcome to the cauldron that is the Bernabeu. Arguably the most famous stadium in world football. The ground at which City have won before. Indeed, their record 